Jesus calls the leaders of the people hypocrites. Hypocrite is a word, a Greek word that really means a stage actor, someone who presents himself or herself different from who they are. But the difference between an actor and a hypocrite is that the actor knows that in fact they are acting. A hypocrite begins to live in the hypocrisy so much that it becomes natural for them to believe what they really present themselves to be. And that is really what lying does to us as well. Lying begins to change us because we begin to believe the lie. Now, I'm not talking about those little fibs that so often we tell in order to be polite if we go to someone's house and they serve a meal and it really isn't very good and we tell them we really like it. That's the kind of white lie that uh, Lillian Carter spoke about once when she uh, uh, allowed uh, reporters to come in and give her an interview. They asked her right away, does Jimmy, your son, tell any lies? And does he ever lie? And she said, well, maybe he tells white lies. And they said, well, what's, what's a white lie? What's the difference between a lie and a white lie? She said, well, a white lie is like when you came to the door and I greeted you and I told you that I was happy to see you. That's the kind of white lies so often that we do tell. But the other kind of lies in which we begin to believe the untruths that air begins to change us, begins to have an impact on our, the way that we look at life. And I think today we see so much of that taking place where all sorts of lies are out there about what our reality is. As we think about our faith and our nation, uh, the way that we raise our families. It's important to really get a hold of the truth and make sure that we don't live in the kind of a life of a lie. One of the ways in which Jesus today in the Word of God helps us understand how we get out of that is to see that God is very close to us, especially in the Word that He has implanted in us. And that is so very important. So. It's, it's really a, a good exercise in our own spiritual life on a daily basis to have a portion, portion of the Word of God, of the Gospel close to us. Words such as we hear in, in the Gospels where uh, the father of the prodigal son says to the older son, I'm always with you, everything I have is yours. Or when Jesus tells us where your treasure is, there your heart will be or do not judge lest you be judged, or you, my, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Some little part of the word of God, close to our heart each day, will help us really be in touch with the truth. I always like that very beautiful uh, painting of Mark Chagall of the praying Jew who's wearing a prayer shawl and he has what they call phylactery, uh, phylacteries around, uh, wrapped around him where there's a little piece of the Word of God in his, and by his head, by, by his elbow, so it's close to his heart, and another one in his hand. So that the Word of God is something that he always meditates on, but it also pierces his heart and also is carried out in the actions of his life. That is how we get out of this cycle of lying, of not telling the truth, or maybe deceiving ourselves by having the Word of God so very close to us, to remind us who we are before God, that we don't have to have a pretense about our life or, or make believe who we are, or tell other people in some way, give the impression that we're, we're something that we are not. Because once we, we really keep in mind how close God is to us, that we are those beloved of God, and that God never abandons us, then the temptation to lie will fade away. We have that wonderful, wonderful line today from the Alleluia verse we should keep in mind. The Father will to give us birth by the word of truth. Let's always keep the word of God close to us. It's the word of truth that helps us always understand the difference between a lie and reality.